Are you in? Good. Okay, Jackson, when we get ready for you, um, there's a few things we have to do to get the meeting started. And then somebody will tell you when we're ready for you to speak, okay?
screen. Can you hear us? Everybody's laptop has to mute. Okay, now. okay. Thanks, Bob. Okay, so I think we're ready, Frank, whenever you are. I'd like to call the meeting to order. We have six board members present. We could stand and salute the flag. Can I have a motion to approve the minutes of the March 16th regular meeting? I'm unmuted. Now. So I'll repeat again, could I have a motion to approve the minutes of the March 16th regular meeting? I'll make a motion, sir. Any corrections or changes? Katie, how do you vote? Yes. Derek? Yes. Jeff? Yes. Sherry? Yes. Rachel? Thumbs up? Rachel's a yes and I'm a yes. Could I have a motion to approve the April 6th round table meeting? Minutes? I'll make the motion, sir. Also. Any changes? Questions? Katie, how do you vote? Yes. Here? Yes. Jeff? Yes. Gary? Yes. Rachel? Up or down? Uh, Rachel's abstained. And I'm a yes. At this time, we have a oral communication for all elementary students, fourth graders. Hi. Good evening, everyone. Um, tonight we have two of our fourth graders with us, um, Luke Koretsky and Rachel Smith. Um, they are both in Mrs. Mears fourth grade class and Mrs. Mears is here as well to support them. Um, so I asked some of our fourth grade students if they were willing to come and speak to the board and talk a little bit about what they're doing and learning uh, in their classes. And these two graciously volunteered. So um, I'm really proud of them for their willingness to come up and speak with you tonight. And they also gave up a little bit of their recess time to meet with the principal and plan for them. So, <laughs> so um, we did a little bit of planning and we talked. The, all, the ideas are all of theirs. It's what they wanted to share with you tonight. And they made a video to showcase what it is that they're doing. And then um, once they're finished, I would encourage you to ask some questions of them or share some comments um, about what they're doing. Okay. All right, so maybe if you guys could just stand over to the side so they can see your wonderful video. And hopefully. There we go. Okay. Still not very loud, is it? Turn up the 
There we go. Yeah, it looks like that's going up a bit. All right, guys, we will get this. My name is Ms. Trotsky, and I'm Rachel. We have completed our governance unit in, fourth, in the fourth grade class. We have learned about the three branches of the government. In the federal and New York state level, there are the executive, the legislative, and the judicial branch. Our final project was to research and make a slideshow and screen test it into a video. Mine was six minutes long. So here are some of the watch now. United States Government by Lee Trotsky. After, after the Revolutionary War, the United States of America established a federal government. The United States colonies established state government. Founding fathers wanted more than one person to have power, and King George III had all the power. But they thought that was not fair. Federal government. It's a system which is the enforces the law. There's a legislative, legislative gas voting, gas and the voting laws and makes law. There's a judicial, the judicial sees if the law goes against the constitution and makes the court. These are the three branches of the federal government. Federal, state, and local government meet the needs of the citizens in ways that are the same and different. We had a great time making this. Bye. Bye.
Going to be via Zoom, right? Okay. Did you tell him it's okay to? Well, you're muted, number one, right? Or is that you? Um, Jackson, are you on? Yes. You would like to present to the board? Yep. Hi, my name is Jackson Goodermill. I'm in fifth grade. Today, I would like to ask you to consider the possibility of adding outdoor free play into the Berlin Middle School and High School. Over the past month, I started a petition and a GoFundMe. Altogether, I have collected 242 signatures and raised $200 from other people in the community that agree that middle school and high school students should enjoy outdoor free play. I am not necessarily asking for playground equipment, because I noticed that in fifth grade, a lot of the kids aren't using the playground and instead are playing with the football, kickball, or on the basketball court. What I am asking you to consider is allowing students the option of using their extra time during their lunch period and study halls to participate in outdoor free play. Numerous studies show that allowing children to play outdoors improves their physical and mental health. Some studies showed that being outside increases focus. So adding free, door, free play during the day could increase students' focus. Additionally, getting some exercise during the day would allow students to use up some of their extra energy and could help with behavior in the classroom. Would you please consider allowing the option of outdoor free play for all middle school and high school students? Uh, 
Okay, Jack Jackson, look forward to this. All right, let me turn my speaker off. And it was a very great presentation you put together, very well put and very well spoken. So thank you. We will be getting back to you. Does anyone on the board have any questions? Not just you know, great presentation. Yes. It's nice to hear um, students' voices. Very good presentation. Thank you, Jackson. You're welcome. Speaker's got to go off. Okay, under action items, Treasury Report, Personal Action, Claim Order, CSE Recommendations, 2020-21 Health Service Contract, Budget Transfers, Educational Agreement, Budget Hearing Vote, Transportation, Non-Public Schools, Educational Agreement, Cooperative Purchase Resolution, Continuation of Sports Merger. Um, one I'm going to pull just for a separate vote is Personal Action. Uh, next one I've been asked to Pull the, uh, budget transfers. Please. Budget <clears throat> Which letter is that, Katie? Top. Yes. On top, you right. Any other items that need to be pulled? <coughs> Could I have a motion in A, C, D, E, G, H, I, J, K, L, and M? Any questions on these action items? Katie, how do you vote? Yes. Derek? Yes. Jeff? Yes. Sherry? Yes. Rachel? Yes. Yes, and I'm a yes. Uh, I'll take a motion for personal action items. Um, make the motion, Frank. Is there a second? One question. Okay. Um, we have to do a second, then we can question. Okay. Do the second? Yeah. Okay, now the question. Um, Okay, so it's replacing. Okay. Any other questions on the personal action items? Katie, how do you vote? Yes. Derek? Jeff? Yes. Sherry? Rachel? Yes. Yes. And I'm abstaining. Okay, last one budget transfer. Um, the first one, it just says additionally, additional budgeted as part of the fiscally responsible planning from, and then two is just says additional expenses relative to hybrid reopening. What exactly does that mean? We've got two uh, PDFs, the yeah. first or second one? Um, the first one. Yeah. It's not the transportation, it's the other one. Okay. Well, this one, uh, in relation to the technology and the data processing that we did, uh, there are some expenses associated with that. Uh, that we have to pay, uh, that's what this refers to. So we're moving money in order to pay for that. Um, so when we were doing the hard uh, some expenses associated with that in terms of the work that was done for data processing. So is it for um, technology? Is it for equipment? Is it for personnel? Mm -hmm. Well, basically for all of the service providers. And then the second one, the transportation transfer. 
It says the purchase was supposed to be part of the capital project. We already have one left in there, correct? Um, we actually have um, a small lift and we have a big lift. Uh, this is for getting us a lift which will be mobile and with columns so that we can actually lift the bus and wash under it. Uh, what we're doing is this will not impact next year's budget at all. It is just from this year's budget. Um, and it is something which is quite essential for us to get so that we can actually get under the bus and clean it so that it will increase the likelihood uh, the longer that you will keep on the bus. So this is so the so third lift in the, in the garage. Yes, but this is a mobile lift. So we can actually take it outside the garage, which would make it more convenient for us to actually clean the buses. What's uh, being done in transportation again, Katie, this summer? When's the bus wash station being put in? So, that's, yeah. so then, if we put the bus wash in, then the lift really is not required to wash any of the buses. Um, so, the bus is something that we do want to make sure we get it, but it's in one of the alternates. And right now, with the increase in cost that we have, uh, and with 14 alternates on the capital project, most likely we will not be able to get to the wash pit at all. Uh, so we do want to make sure we have something in place so that we can actually wash under the buses. Um, but the, the base itself is big enough for us in the capital project that most likely we will not get to the alternates. But it is part of that. You're absolutely correct. It is part of the alternates that we have. We shouldn't wait to see the alternate what how the bids play out tomorrow. Um, yes, we could. We could definitely wait for that. Um, but the, with the number of alternates that we have and are prioritizing the schools so that even if alternates are able to fit in, we're prioritizing the Berlin Elementary School and the Berlin Middle High School. So the transportation wash day will be towards the towards almost the end of the alternate. So most likely uh, we will not get to it. Um, even if we take in some alternates and we're able to because of the bids coming in lower, um, the likelihood is almost non-existent that we'll actually get to an alternate for the transportation um, BMF because we will prioritize our classroom spaces. I think if we're going to put a mobile lift outside, I'd like to see more information on and really if it can be put outside, does it have to be a flat ground, concrete ground, on gravel, or safety aspects to it? My druther is to pull this to get the information together, get the bits in. And then see where we need to go. Okay. Um, I do have a um, week or two in order to answer any technical questions. If I'd like to see the data from the left. Okay. That's my background, Derek's too. Oh. So we'll pull that one. Everyone's agreeable. Mm -hmm. And then the first transfer for the bring it up. I don't know if I want to call it with a, that's the, how do we identify that transfer? It's just the regular, it's not the, the, the uh, not the transportation one. So could I have a motion on that first transfer? I'll make a motion on the first transfer. Is there a second? Katie, how do you vote? Yes. Derek? Jeff? Yes. Sherry? Yes. Rachel? Yes. Yes, and I'm a yes. Uh, we have a lengthy agenda tonight. Um, I don't have a report for this month. And I'll turn it over to the superintendent. Okay. Is there an echo or? Oh, we are okay. All right, so I want to start by saying thank you to the Berlin Elementary students uh, who did a great job of presenting to us. To us. Um, thank, thank you also to our student representative, Jordan, who is continuing to do a great job uh, in bringing information to us. So thank you so much. Um, I've had a great time visiting, visiting our, class our classrooms since, since our last board meeting at both the buildings, Berlin Elementary, as well as the middle high school. It's very encouraging to see the teaching and learning that is happening every day in our classrooms. 
and the energy that our students and our staff are putting into it each and every day. Um, I also had the great fortune of going to the Stephen Town Library annual meeting on Sunday. Um, that was a lot of fun and uh, getting to see community members. Uh, in terms of COVID, uh, there are some things to note. There has been new guidance that has come out from the CDC and the Department of Health uh, relating, uh, relating to uh, schools, schools and the operation of schools since the, since the last time uh, we, uh, we had had a board meeting. Uh, so, uh, we are, so we are tentatively looking to go for all five days at Berlin Elementary School starting, starting the week of May 3rd. Uh, uh, we are working with the Department of Health right now on cohorting guidance, which would which help, help to enable to bring which would help enable, enable us to bring back uh, Berlin, Berlin Middle High School students four days a week. Uh, right, uh, right now, the way they're explaining cohorting is we have to do the same, the same students stay in a pod the entire day, uh, which, which would make it extremely hard for us to do under our current scheduling. So we're working, we're working right, right now. now on, on is with, ways with, with the Department of Health that would allow us to bring students back. Um, we, are we are having staff meetings as well as, well as meetings with community members regarding, regarding a return to school in person, which would enable more of our students to keep coming back to school. So those, so those meetings are underway. Uh, Don, Don mentioned prom, prom that's, that's coming up on May 8th. We are really, really excited about it. Uh, planning, uh, planning for, for graduation and other end of the year events is also underway. Uh, based, uh, based on the guidance that we have received from New York State DOH, uh, we're, uh, we're making, making intensive plans for end of the year graduation and celebration, celebration events, uh, which, we, uh, which will we will notify the board of as well. We're really, we're really excited, excited because a few weeks back, back we, were we were not sure if we could do these events. And now, and now we're, we're in a place where we know we can do these events. We just have to make sure we do the right thing in order to hold the events successfully. successfully. Um, our, our students, students in grades, grades three to eight are taking the ELA test this week. So that is just some information. Uh, capital project, the phase one, one punch list is progressing. We now, we now have a certificate of occupancy for the modular. Uh, the bids are out on phase two, phase two and, and they will be closing tomorrow. So tomorrow is the bid close date. Um, in athletics, I attended the ladies cross country. Uh, thank you, Sherry, for the invitation. It was a lot of fun. At Grafton State Park. Park. So it was a lot, was of, a lot fun. of fun. Uh, um, our team, they did really good, similar to soccer. Uh, our our cross country team did really well. well. Our and boys and girls team finished number one. And, uh, and uh, sports, sports is about to start. Uh, uh, and, a and a couple of senior, senior nights are coming up for, for girls, girls volleyball, volleyball and boys soccer is on, is on Friday the 23rd. Uh, girls, girls, girls soccer on Saturday, April 24th. And cross country is on Tuesday, April 27th. Uh, so these, uh, so are, these senior are senior nights, nights due to, due the, to latest the latest guidance and due to, and due to leagues, uh, leagues uh, we, are we are giving, giving uh, tickets, uh, tickets for every student, student to bring, to bring parents, parents um, with them with for, for senior nights seniors, nine seniors to bring two, to bring two parents yeah. with so them. So we're hoping that'll, that'll add some, some sense of normalcy uh, uh, to, to the process as well. Uh, in, budget, uh, in budget, we've been doing a lot of planning uh, with, uh, with a conservative approach on the budget, and this will be reflected in the presentation tonight. Our, our allowable tax exclusion is 5.41%. Uh, this is the this amount, is the amount that, that we're allowed to go up to without needing a super majority. majority. However, the district, district is aware of the impact of the pandemic on all of us, um, and, um, and we stay well, well below our allowable limit. And this, and this will also, also be in the presentation. So we are aware of the effect of the pandemic, Keeping, so keeping that, that in mind, mind as we create our budget. Our budget. Um, and this is something that we do want to convey. The voting is on May 18th at, at the Berlin Middle, Middle High School cafeteria. This is a change in location from the BES gym for COVID restrictions. So, so having, having the voting in the, in the cafeteria will enable us to, to make, make it so that the voters can come in through one entrance, vote, vote and then leave through another entrance. Uh, without actually entering the rest of the school building. And so, and that, so that way we'll be able to maintain a separation regarding COVID. Uh, uh, so, so that's why we're changing the voting location from the elementary school to the Berlin Middle High School. And we will set, we'll set aside, aside some parking spots as well. So when people come to vote, there'll be some designated parking spots available, a short walk, they can vote, and then they can return. Uh, so, uh, so voting is on May 18th in the cafeteria at the Middle High School. And that's it for me. And a comment I picked a student up on the sports program, and they couldn't have rained any harder and any colder because they're out there playing soccer. <laughs> Lots of energy. True. 
legislative liaison, Jeff? I'd like to come up that. Okay. Not able to access it because we had to plug in. Okay, I'm sorry. I'll just take it back. Okay. Uh, I, don't, I don't want to block, block that. Yeah. Yeah. This is something I uh, contacted uh, the news uh, a week or two ago, and I took a while to find the information. New York State Board of Regents. Thank you. New York State Board of Regents. To adapt New York State Basically, the title is kind of not close, but the way it's being developed and adopted it. Our problem, in my opinion, uh, everybody in the board has this. Uh, basically, it's just to acknowledge the role of racism and dignity and how that has played a big part in the American territory. We have the city that has adopted this, and they did case theirs on critical race theory. and. The opening of their presentation uh, has a white, white identity matrix. I think that you've seen that. But they it's start out as a uh, white, white supremacist and then they educate that out of you and until you get one to one the eighth level, level which or you know, what they call a white abolitionist or a white traitor, depending on who you listen to. And, and basically, basically, at that point, you will do everything, everything in your power to make sure, sure that. White is not uh, influenced by the education system. And uh, I guess the first stage, stage is clearly white to our society that will serve the names and values of white superiority. And the last one is changing institutions to spread white whiteness and not allowing whiteness to be asserted itself. And this is not going over well in New York City. Buffalo has also done it. And they did what they call self-disclosure sponsored teaching, sponsor teaching which, which basically is based on the Black Lives Matter political, political agenda. And I don't you know, think that the website's a big place to want it, but uh, I'm going to leave it up here. I try to get more organizations of what the city has put out as a program. program. And I managed to get that that yesterday. yesterday. It was written on the 12th. And it has, has the New York State, State framework for diversity, equity, inclusion, and, and a call to action. Yeah, that's the one you want to the board. board. Uh, page, uh, page four of that, that lists list the reason why they have to do this and what their priorities are. And it's a, it's a few bullet items. It starts with the senseless, brutal killing of black and brown and women at the hands of law enforcement and the ensuing demands for real and enduring racial justice in the face of this humanity. A dangerous spike in violence, violence aimed, aimed at Asian Americans and Islanders, fueled in part by lies that attempt to link the Asian community to the creation and spread of the coronavirus. Or the worst thing in the last uh, administration, China. Further, a renewed wave of discrimination and hateful rhetoric directed at those. To be somehow not, not quite American, including but not what we do, Jewish, Jewish American, Americans, Muslim, Muslim Americans, Americans LGBTQ, individuals, individuals with disabilities, immigrants and refugees, refugees, especially those arriving from the southern border. And, and the fact that uh, COVID, COVID has more strongly impacted on minorities and poor persons in our society. That is that their Reason for doing what the goal yes. is. The rest of the agenda, uh, they basically, basically are saying that, that this, this has to be cut out, out of everybody. Uh, uh, this, this is going on in Virginia, and yeah. the parents in Virginia are trying to get rid of the school boards over there. They are very unhappy with that. 
a few states have banned it outright. The thing is, <laughs> my daughter said when she read this, if you keep telling people they're racist, a lot of people are going to become racist or more racist, and there could be a blowback to minority, minority communities, which I would not want to see. Uh, personally, if we were, in, if I was in the Buffalo School this District or the Houston District, school district, district my kids would, would not be in public school. They would not allow them to. Uh, I'd also like to like to the age. Just a personal, I was an Asian brat. I was in Charleston, South Carolina during the race riots in the 60s. I was in Virginia Beach during the race riots in the late 60s. Okay. okay. I saw what it did to the communities. And I think this particular problem may be even back there. And that's all I want to say. And we've seen a You've all got copies of everything, but the first, last one. If you go to the first document I get you, it references the stuff down here. Which I did not get until this morning. So, thank you. Thank you, Jeff. And I think we've touched on the facilities, the bids are coming in. Yeah, I actually, I just have a question. About okay. That. Yes. Okay. Anything else on the facilities? We're on elementary. Um, we recently sent out the fourth and final survey um, to our remote families as we started the fourth quarter on April 19th. So, so we were able to welcome back a number of our students who had previously been remote for the school year. Um, so at this point in time, we have about 45 students who remain remote. Um, over to the quarter, we were able to bring more students back to in person learning. Um, Tara mentioned that we would be emailing state testing administration for our in person students. Um, we offered it to our students. Um, I do have a handful of students who are coming in tomorrow. We have to have them in person today, so they will take it tomorrow. Um, we are planning currently for kindergarten screening. We always want to find out the favorite thing on our new Disney student who will be entering in kindergarten in the fall. Uh, last, last year we had to do it virtually, but we have a plan to be able to screen the students in person, following similar protocols that we have to for our current school children. Oh, and last today, in addition to having state testing, we were also able to start intramurals again at BES. Um, now that the weather is nice, uh, we can be out um, and not have to worry about the things of space and gymnasium. So our fourth graders participate in our intramurals on Tuesday morning, and our fifth graders participate in our Thursday morning. So, uh, Kids were really excited by this morning to uh, participate in those intervals and get back to that. So. Great, thank you. Billy Fallman, in middle school, high school. Okay, hello everyone, good evening. Um, Quickly, here in your house, we're doing our ELA state testing. Uh, it starts for sixth, seventh, and eighth grade students tomorrow, um, session one. So, so um, transportation will be bringing in our sixth, seventh, and eighth grade students. There are a number of remote students also coming in for testing. Um, we'll have our math state testing on um, fifth, and then science on June 9th for the eighth graders for science test. Um, other things we're planning for, we're currently planning for prom. It is a very busy time on the air um, between changing our sports seasons and getting into some competition and having senior nights. 
um, the, the, the special permission that Jordan was talking about. When the guidance came out on April 12th, that gave schools updated uh, protocols for uh, prom and graduation, what it said was um, after June 1st, comma, here are all of the uh, updated data protocols. So um, it was a conversation that I had with one of the representatives over at Rensselaer County Department of Health. What do we do with our comments on May? Because we wanted to make sure that we were going to be safe holding our event before the first Saturday study. So that was a conversation with the local county Department of Health. They've been giving us really great advice, and my and they've worked um, individually with our school nurse. Um, they've answered any questions that we've had, and then really like along with them. Um, so we will continue to do our very best to offer as much as is safely possible um, through the COVID guidelines and protocols, um, not only for our seniors, but um, for the juniors and seniors. We're hoping to make it a real um, event. We'll have our walk, uh, march, grand march outdoors um, on May 8th. Uh, so students will be staggered upon arrival. They'll come through and have their outdoor walk with their announcement music of the time. Um, we have a lot of safety plans in place. We've had a number of meetings with the class advisors, with the vendors, with the, the location, um, and with Mr. Dara and, and Fred, Ethan, and our nurses. Just making sure that we're really listening to what the students are wanting most and making sure that we can provide them the most that we're able to while still remaining safe. Uh, Monday, I guess, uh, well, that was yesterday, yesterday so the first day of quarter four. That's a really, uh, that's a really big accomplishment here at the Brooklyn Middle High School, especially considering, you know, we're having ongoing conversations about how difficult the hybrid model is. Um, Finding that we are being a little bit harder on ourselves and more successful than um, we've been giving ourselves credit for along the way. Um, we've really been able to target in on uh, uh, the, the targeted instruction necessary through our Wednesday schedule, um, which has gotten really great feedback from our teachers and some of from some of our parents and students at the sixth and twelfth grade. Rate. Um, what they really need is that targeted instruction. So being able to maintain that time now on our days is really helpful, especially as we get in the last quarter of the year, which really is going to make a difference for some of our students and the normal success that they'll see um, going into the summer and hopefully getting back to the school. We're hoping um, our schedule is created for middle school or schedule created. High school, High school um, course selection finished, so we're just looking through and putting those um, into the master segment and then doing, doing our best yes. to get ready for next year. year. So, so we have a kind of a wave of events for right now, now at the prom, and then we'll have another wave of events at the level from the end of the year with the Regents of Dance and Graduation. So, we'll have for you all these things. I think it's Jody, where are you hosting prom this year? Oh, nice. The one in barn. Yes. Yeah, great spot to have it with the two. There are two 16 foot barn doors that open on either end. Um, they're allowed to use some yeah. of the outdoor space as well. Yeah. <laughs> it's beautiful, though. <laughs> I know. It will be beautiful. We've had so many discussions. We should do background oh. plans. <laughs> what do they need to go through? So, um, if we can have one chaperone per 10 students, we're able to make sure that our numbers are on a reasonable amount with uh, uh, with appropriate supervision. Great, right, thank you. Thank you. Exceptional education. <clears throat> Change my presentation a little bit uh, tonight, and um, I want to talk a little bit about um, the culturally responsive framework, um, which I believe that um, Jeff referenced. Um, you know, I attended a training on the culturally responsive um, framework not long ago, and it was through the lens of um, parent communication, um, because that is that's that's more important to me. Um, and you know, as I sat through that training, I really identified. Um, 
some areas where I think we can really really improve in terms of parent communication, um, particularly cultural you know responsiveness. And I like to go, you know, we had a conversation about that um, social media process framework. Um, you know, and when I think about Berlin, and you know, when I talk about Berlin, we have a very unique you know population here. Um, we are not racially diverse. <laughs> we are not, we are not religiously diverse. Um, but we are very socially diverse. We are very politically diverse. We are very, very economically diverse. Um, and I think it's important to me when we think of education and we think of what the goal of education is, it is to prepare our students to really exit us and become responsible citizens and responsible adults. Um, and I know I think me personally, you know, when I think about restorative practices, this cultural responsiveness really does fall under you know, restorative practice because it's not about understanding our students and then really leaving them where they are. Um, so I just want to make sure that, you know, that I, I mentioned that. Um, and the kind of cultural responsive framework um, has been put up by New York State. Um, it's been around a couple of years now. Um, so, and, and, and again, it's do you need to look at it from a different lens when you do think about how it does apply to Berlin and then really addressing the culture that we do have here? So, um, I'm going to spend the rest of my time just from a restorative lens, giving some shout outs to my other fellow staff, staff members who supported uh, uh, my efforts throughout the month. It was a very great day. Um, I want to shout out just Rachel Tipperkey, our social psychologist at the elementary school, and my secretary, Michelle Halloran. Um, um, for the things we were to hold this month was a family training for um, transition from preschool special education to school age um, special education. Um, they reached out to families um, individually in order to get that up off the ground. Um, that's a cooperation center, family and community engagement center. Um, so we were able to hold that. Um, I'm going to shout out Tracy and Shock, who spent last Friday with me um, on a restorative practices training for three hours. So we have another Friday evening together, I think, is it this week or next week, part two. Um, so I'm going to say thank you to them. And I know she left, but I wanted to say thank you to Jeanette also. Um, I really do enjoy working with Jeanette. I was able to spend some time at the um, transportation department today, um, working with our um, transportation staff on um, DS relation strategies. Um, and, you know, I, I really tried to hear their feedback, and I did identify some areas where I do think, um, you know, going forward in September, um, you know, we could use uh, some work. You know, one of them is, is neglect on my part. You know, I've been doing all this community building work this year. Um, I, I have been involved in the transportation department, but um, you know, that's, that's an area I really haven't focused on. So we do really want to focus on that as we um, go into September. Um, we're doing some community building down there and on the buses. Um, and just trying to increase communication in general, um, you know, so that we are really um, united um, in our approach um, to restorative practices. So that's it for me too. Just a brief comment on um, every time I've talked to administrators here, they've always put students first. And I agree. I don't think any stone should be left unturned. Um, it is our job to prepare the students and all students for the future. And so thank you for that. Curriculum instruction. Um, it's very hot under a mask at this time of year. Um, I'm not going to shave, but uh, so it's been very busy. Uh, Mr. Dahar has had us really investigating some deep uh, systemic components that probably, you know, it's the time has come. Uh, so to start, uh, we have the 2021-22 step the School Conference of Education Plan. Joey mentioned this. Uh, that we're uh, going to, uh, to look at and analyze what we have to do to improve. Um, we're always improving. Um, we also are looking at a school like grading policy. Uh, in the report cards this year, this quarter, you're going to get the parents are going to get a letter home from uh, Mrs. Sullivan and Mr. Dahara explaining a review and audit that we did on our grading. Our teachers didn't have a grading policy. We haven't had a grading policy here for many, many years. Um, this year with COVID, we felt like we needed to have something. So we put something in place by committee. Uh, operating in some in a policy that you're not familiar with or used to using. Post some challenges uh, for some of our courses. So we do have some corrections that were made. Uh, we took a hold harmless approach. Um, so no grades went down um, as a result of some of the corrections that needed to be made. 
So I'm grateful for that. Um, so that's good for those students. Uh, we will be explaining all this in, in, a, in a pretty nice letter uh, that that's going to be coming out last week of Tuesday. So the report cards are going to be one day later than they would have been normal. Uh, we're also looking at summer learning. Uh, so somebody asked us earlier today if, if we had trend data or if we knew how COVID had impacted learning. We have some stuff. It, it's, we've analyzed the data. We don't, I wouldn't say that it's trend data. It's too short. One year, it's a unique experience. But we know that we have loss. Every time that you have a summer, you get summer loss. Plus loss in March, April, August, we have some loss. We're looking at how we can restore some of that loss. And summer seems to offer an opportunity. Uh, I'm sure, sure Mr. Dahara will be discussing this with the board. And, um, and Ms. Kabaz and I, as well as the other administrators, are looking into options um, so that we can provide best service for our kids always. Um, we don't we want, want to continue to use the system. We want to try and recover as much as we can. Um, as a server, we're looking at expanding the reopening. Uh, we do have a submission for the reopening plan that has to be submitted by our fire chief. So Mr. Dahara and I are working on that. Plus, we have to apply for an APPR waiver uh, because, uh, because the state assessments that are not going to happen, the some of the Regents exams are, are tied, tied to our APPR. State's not going to give those, so we're required to write a waiver around those. That can make it more discussing those things. I'm also, also it's a safety month in the schools. Um, so this has been a real big month for uh, the district wide safety committee, but also for the county safety. Mr. Hart, I attended that today. It's really interesting research coming out about mental health, students, and staff, uh, and how to address those so that before they become safety concerns. Um, so that's kind of interesting. In association with that, I attended a really great national National Press assessment thing from the um, Civil Service. Those guys know from here. Um, we have. Uh, we've been researching some grant funding. So we're going to look at a reading apprenticeship program. There are five of us six that are getting trained over the summer. That's really going to be a, a significant change in the way we do reading and support reading at this building next year. Uh, that would be fun and exciting. I think it's 10 months worth of training. It's a huge grant. We've got a request for in April Park. Uh, I'm trying to help the principal support end of year planning as much as I can. For me, that probably needs to stand out of the way. Um, and then uh, we've been reviewing the update guidelines around state testing, testing and regents exams. Uh, we, you know, we are testing the ELA here tomorrow. We tested the ELA at the elementary school today. And in the spirit of sort of uh, practices, I also do some challenges. This has been a really, really hard year. So our teachers, our administrators, uh, this is a lot. There's our board members, you guys have seen through all these moments getting the masks on. Specifically, I'd like to thank Dave Ellis. Uh, for Sam with all sorts of technological components. He's been great to us this year. We're at a great class. Class. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. has done a really excellent investigative job on the great books. Um, Sam sponsoring the Spirit Month with Kayla Marbit for, for reigniting the character education program. Finally, uh, May 1st is our wellness fair at our 5K. It's going to be a hybrid. You can run virtually or you can run here. I think you already had to sign up to designate where. Um, um, I want to thank Ariel Gilbert and Michelle Corsi, who also has kept us in school all year. She's done an excellent job. So I just, you know, it's time to be thankful. Uh, uh, we're getting close to the end of this, and we, we've done a lot. <laughs> so I'm thankful about the lot. I'm really thankful about being close to the end. Thank you. Thank you. Building no, grounds. on the new social distancing guidelines have been published by the CDC and the New York State Department of Health. Um, we have taken on overseeing the final punch list for completion for project one and obtaining the certificates of uh, occupancy for the new bus maintenance facility and the portable office trailer that we're using at swing space for the district offices, um, which we obtained yesterday. So we've been working with the architect and the new construction management firm 
to answer questions and respond to requests for documentation and information to finalize specifications and plans for project number two. I'd like to take the opportunity to just thank the Board of Education for approving the schoolhouse um, construction services. Um, they have excellent, excellent references um, in the industry. And so far they've shown what a superior firm that they really are. They really helped us out with um, putting out a schedule for project two. They helped us with connecting up the bid um, from last week this week, week in order to try to initiate more interest and in more people to um, receive bids and whatnot. So they've been really doing an awesome job um, so far. So, um, the bid tomorrow afternoon. It'll be shown via a Zoom link. Uh, the maintenance staff has been working in normal spring cleanup. They've been tasked with uh, prepping the soccer fields at uh, here at the middle school, high school, and Berlin Elementary as well, and keeping in line. The custodial staff used the April break to move student furniture into the school buildings. Um, so, in the event that if there should be a reduction of social distancing, we can accommodate that. They also use that time to do a complete and thorough cleaning of both school building buildings and disinfecting of sink. Uh, the track is open to the public. It has been for three or four weeks now, at least. Uh, so the man gate is open. open. Uh, we need to come up with some rules and regulations to be able to post to make sure that um, just to assist with the proper use of the facility and make sure that it stays in its current condition for many, many years to come. So, thank you. Is there any way to block out that no motorized vehicles can get through that gate? Well, what we try to do is just minimize the access gate width in order to try to prevent that. There really isn't, there isn't necessarily a way to do that unless we go to blocking the access, the three foot access gate at the end of the, you know, somehow in the evening and open it reopen it in you know the morning or during the day. We're trying to you know we're trying to keep public use of the track until after school hours when students aren't here. Um we can work to work on getting like I said rules and regulations posted in there for the track. Um uh, motor idea yeah. can really do a number on the track. Yeah, yeah. again I guess you know and looking at that one of the things that was talked about was some removable bollards that we can put a base into the and then be able to just pull that out. out. So I guess this we could maybe look at possibly doing that, which would reduce that down to you know, depending on the number that we put in, we could reduce it down the size of the entry point. Um, and yeah, but they could just remove it. Just move a bull ballard that you know they could just remove it. Protect it after yeah, I mean that's the thing. I mean it's it's open, you know, it's open all well, the, the best way would probably make it to minimize the ability to access it down here. Yeah. Instead of the actual track, try to, you know, put a gate or something. That well, a lot of things you can drive the school. School. So we're, we're, we're yeah. looking at, at that already, which is the, was the, the piece about having the removable bollards. And I've been working with Reisenberg contract on that um, and need to get some ideas. <clears throat> they have some suggestions or recommendations for us. As far as that goes, we need to pin that down and just get that work done. But again, it's a removable bollard that somehow, I don't know if you use a wrench or a key, and you're able to take them out and remove them. So if you have an emergency, you need to get an ambulance or something up in the back, you can. But in the meantime, people can go and walk through, but they drive right. So yeah, it's tough to protect it. Tough. <laughs> The number we were given that was approximately the number. We don't know if they actually applied them. That was the interest shown. Um, first, the main thing was we needed someone to be, you know, on a GM or a plumbing. Those were the two areas that we were looking for. Um, we had electrical and mechanical, so therefore, by uh, changing the money, I think I did a little bit. Uh, which I emailed to the board by the facilities committee by changing the milestone schedule and by extending the bid date by another week. 
um, they were able to generate interest. So we will know tomorrow as to how many of them to apply. Um, I don't have that number right now. Though. And it, it's just extending it to um, completion in October. It's not like it's, you know, extending it years. It's just mm -hmm. a few months. That is correct. So, like, there were some projects which was not in the summer of the alternative in the early fall, um, so on. So, and again, we need to extend that simply because when the contractors actually looked at the timeline, the schedule, they, they were not able to fit it in. Right. Um, so, we, were, we have worked with them and we have a plan in terms of making sure. Uh, our instruction is not disrupted in any way. I guess we've got to come up with the rules. So we've we've taken a look at that and actually it's pretty attractive. The difference of how to work with comprehensive existing of the rules um, and regulations. And then we decided that we needed to really come up with some type of like a full time once more. Um, so we may have to actually buy two signs to uh, to put regulations on one and the whole thermal clause on the other um, and post so we just you know we haven't come to a final you know finalizing that yet and getting the sign yeah, and we, we keep that be open until that that the sale oh, no. uh, this the gate the gate remains open and actually remains open period okay. um, locked up We've locked the path so nobody can close at the gates during the day so people can access and it's really one of those things that comes down to really common sense that people, the public should really know um, have school hours um, and use the track. But I don't want it, I don't want it to be, um, and I don't want it put out that the track is found to be closed. So that's why we locked the the locks so that people couldn't inadvertently close the gates and lock them and keep people from going in there. So, um, you know, we just like everything else, um, it's new, we're learning, we're, we're still working on some procedures to make sure we narrow that. Thank you. Karen, got a group of things. So, we've got Kenny here, business office, we're starting uh, end of your procedures and beginning of your procedures um, as far as paying those and swapping those things out uh, there's heavy things in place. Um, most uh, purchases other than safety and health related matters are frozen at this point. We do that every year. We have also started collecting items for the uh, audit and the auditors. So um, so far so good as far as our communication with them and uh, we'll see how that plays out. <coughs> Transportation. We're moving. Yay. Um, Rachel Kresge has uh, uh, started communication with the Transportation Department, uh, Joe, um, and the PTO to see if we can't um, come up with some sort of a ribbon cutting through this new building. So we're looking forward to how that plays out uh, also. Um, Jeanette Alder and I just want to say how impressed I am with her. This, this was her, you know, you know, reaching out to Sam to say our, you know, bus attendants need more skills you know they need to know how to how to you know deal with these students they they you know they, they just don't have the uh requisite knowledge so i think that's great she's, also, she's attending her training herself regarding uh accident investigation and training because we have such a comprehensive policy and procedure as far as how you know we have to respond to accidents um so that's great uh layla davis our dispatcher is attending a dispatching training she's also coordinating for a trainer to come and get all of our staff operating on steel and harness usage and how you know that should fit for especially our younger and more vulnerable um, um students. So I'm um, I'm really proud of the effort going on down there to uh you know just increase training and, and knowledge for our staff. Excuse me, um our IT department our IT department has already put out to the principals um a comprehensive plan on how to refer the technology devices back in the district without you know disrupting Thing so, is the learning of the plan is to bring them back in district and not have them going home as of a particular date, just staying in district as of then. <clears throat> and then our remote students will be, you know, just the four regions or just at the end of school year. We're putting their learning action plans because we do have uh, inventory that we have to take care of. And obviously, typically we do it during the year. We can't do it now, now because 
which one does this hotel going to have the device in here? So uh, we will we have that plan for the summer just as soon as we get everything back. We have received our first shipment of Chromebooks this year that has been due to availability. So um, any of those junky ones that you had, as Mary said, you know, will be in place. Um, so we're, we're hoping that that continues the next year. Um, as far as I've got those. Um, but we are also looking into offering a uh, insurance for our, our uh, parents for next year. year. Assuming, Assuming that, that in one way, shape, form, or form, whether it's one, 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 one or you know, this is a big issue, you know, in, in, in person devices, devices. Something, something that, that um, if, if the child breaks, breaks if their mom or their iPad, iPad did not have um, a significant financial impact. impact. Um, um, other other stuff have already done it, we're going to try and limit there. And just so that we can cut costs in other sources and like taking them. So, so definitely that's what I'm for. Uh, uh, so sales are picking, picking up. up. They've, They've offered more offerings. So when, when you go on, you see like, you know, well, if you don't like oh, there's chef salad or there's, you know, uh, uh, not, not just, just peanut butter and jelly, jelly, but you know, something, something else. else. So those, those services are picking up, which is, up, which is great. Because so as I told you before, we were, we were struggling a little bit with that. So, so we're hoping to, at the very least, break even by the, by the end of this year. Um, and, then and then we're hoping for next year, you know, a typical school year. That's what we're planning on now on a regular, you know, unless the rules come down so we can't walk through the uh, cafeteria line. <coughs> um, I'll also um, let you know that Tammy Whitman is going to do, um, try to offer food through the school, school uh, during the summer. The problem, the problem with, that, with that is that all the food would be offered, but there would be no one to that. And so we would not have to pay for the staff. So, so shout out, out and, you know, Peeler um, um, with the help of Rachel. And there just, just wasn't that. enough interest to be able to go to the cost. So she, so she has, has a communication with the library. See the program done last year, both offered some of the food program. So she has been in contact with that, and that is their intent. I don't know that she got it. But, but I would assume, assume that they're trying, trying to do that. that. Yeah. But just so that you know, you know, we did try, we did, you know, look into that table. Yeah. 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 Moving on to the 21.2 budget bill. Yeah. It's up to you. Whatever is easiest. The 2021-2022 budget. Uh, it's important for us to keep in mind that this has been a very challenging year for us. So we have had unexpected expenses uh, due to COVID. We are also anticipating a loss in state aid for next year uh, due to food services and transportation, food services, and other services. Um, so this has been a challenge year for us, but what, what we are committed to doing is maintaining our programs for our students. We are committed to maintaining our instructional programs, our co-curricular activities, our extracurricular activities. Um, and that is something that we take very seriously. So as we go through this budget presentation, uh, you will notice that we've taken a conservative approach in terms of our expenditures, but we've also kept in mind um, Okay. Um, okay. All right. There is a slight echo. 
Uh, I'll do my best. So uh, there is a kind of little bit of a code here in terms of making sure we first started with what is extremely important for the students to learn, what, do, what are the programs we need to maintain, and then building back to that in terms of what are the finances we need in order to support those programs. Using the research expenses we've had this year and going into next year predictively, um, we have had to be careful in terms of how we do the money that we're getting from the federal government as one shot deal. Uh, so the American Rescue Plan is just a one shot deal. And so we have to be careful because next year it won't be there. Uh, so we have to be careful, careful in planning it out. We will see that reflected as well in the budget. We have had to use some of that in order to make sure that we can have a balanced budget presented in both forms. Um, I think the fact that we are doing a lot of things to make sure that our students have a sense of normalcy, that we are maintaining our programs, that we are doing what we need to do for our kids. So some points to note, the current proposal will maintain our current programs and also help us to meet our student needs. That is extremely important to us. We recognize that there has been a learning loss, as many of the administrators have pointed out. There's also been a loss in terms of social emotional learning and mental health. And those are things that we need to make sure we're addressing as well. So in this proposal, I'm making a proposal for us to add a half-time social worker to share with Google Falls. And the purpose is to make sure that we are meeting the social emotional needs and the mental health needs of our students. I'm also making a proposal for us to add a full-time reading specialist. And this is to help us close some of the gap that has happened, the learning loss that has happened due to COVID for the last one year plus. Uh, so this is a one and a half FTE which is being added on. And uh, there is a strong rationale for this. It is completely related to student needs and their instructional needs. Um, when we look at summer programs, as Fred mentioned, this is again relating directly to any kind of loss that may have happened due to this COVID pandemic and addressing again those through the summer program. So we are running a couple of summer programs. Uh, we're making sure to fund them through grants when we can and through our own budget when we can, but we are very determined to make sure that our students in the summer months are able to not only stop the summer slide, but are able to recuperate some of the learning loss that has already happened. That is critical for us. This, uh, as I mentioned, this already takes into account the American Rescue Plan, um, and we have taken a conservative approach to the budget. We realize that times are hard uh, on everyone, and we wanted to make sure that we took account of that as we're designing our plan. So the first one is the legislative budget. Um, this is all in the PowerPoint that is shared. Um, some things to note are that, you know, as we go through this, uh, there's gonna be a difference from 2021 to 2122. Uh, especially in terms of some of the aid that we get. So as you can see, transportation in one of the areas I was mentioning, uh, we're going to have some reduced numbers simply because of the fact that it wasn't operating at 100% this year compared to last year. Uh, so there are just some things to keep in mind. BOCES aid for the same reason, third down is showing a reduction for that. And so those are just some numbers to keep in mind. Hopefully due to the pandemic, this is also a one-shot thing where we lose this aid due to reduce services, but then we're going to make it up going into next year um, and beyond. So to summarize some of the things in that sheet, uh, the legislative budget shows an increase in actual aid of about 11.2%, um, and the governor's pandemic adjustment decrease of $670,000 uh, was actually removed and subsequent CARES Act federal reimbursement was also removed. Um, and so the, that's because the total allocation from the CRRSA, the COVID relief uh, amount was $670,000. So that money came in and the governor's money left. So basically it was a wash. Uh, so it is important to notice how some of the numbers changed when the American Rescue Plan was passed. Um, the American Rescue Plan is a total of $1.7 million, uh, but it is, it is in the form of a grant, and we have to be careful how we use that money and over a couple of years. So even though it is $1.7 million, uh, there are strict guidelines on how we can use that money, what can we use it for, and when can we use it for. Uh, 
so for this year, we're taking 12.5% of it, which is about $180,000 uh, from the American Rescue Plan. Now, the rest of the money is still ours, um, but we have to be cognizant of how exactly we are going to systematically use it over a couple of years, uh, rather than one last time. What's that? And you try to save as much in that amount? Yes, yes, that is one of the guidelines. We have to take a minimum of 12.5%. What they don't want us to do, Jeff, is to stock that money aside uh, for a rainy day, let's say three years down the road. So what they're saying is we have to use a minimum amount every year. So 12.5% is something we have to take uh, from that. And that's a, that's a great point uh, because this is a grant which tells you you have to spend a certain amount um, every year. Um, going on to the miscellaneous revenue, this is the revenue that we get through various reimbursements um, and through proceeds. Most of it is going to stay consistent, as you can see by the 0% change. A lot of it stays consistent. The one thing to note is our refund from the prior year proceeds has dropped, and that's again related to services due to COVID pandemic. Uh, so there has been a drop in that. Uh, that's one thing to note for that. Um, in summarizing this, the miscellaneous revenues are projected to increase by about $46,000. So it's a small amount, a little bit of an increase, but um, we're already incorporating it into the budget. The tax gap calculation. This is the critical part where we are showing how we are taking a conservative approach, keeping in mind the challenges that you know, our economy is um, putting us all under, as well as what the community is going through. So we have exclusions that we can use. Um, that's what these numbers are showing. So when you look at the tax levy limit and the exclusions, uh, there are exclusions that we can use, uh, adding up almost to, it's hidden behind this, it's about 4.48%. Now, if we were to use no exclusions, we would be at 1.04% for tax levy tax. Uh, with exclusions, which we are allowed to do, uh, we'll be around 4.47%, and that again does not require a supermajority. But we do not want to go that high because we are cognizant of the challenges that are present in our economy and in the community. So, something to keep in mind the local share of debt, the state aid, is deducted from expenditures. Uh, that's the definition of it. Maximum allowable tax gap, as I mentioned, is 1.04%. If you do not use any exclusions at all, uh, the maximum allowable tax cap with ex exclusions is 4.48%. Um, right from the first budget presentation, I'd recommended a modest use of exclusions. And the reason is, is that next year we are predicting increased expenses due to COVID, lack of state aid, and so on. And our exclusions will not be there for next year in terms of this amount. So the amount that we can actually go up to is going to reduce. So from a long-term fiscal perspective, it is advisable for us to have a modest use of exclusions. This is a summary of what it would look like. Um, so the tax levy calculations that we did, uh, last presentation had come up with 2.85%, went back, really looked at the numbers, um, the expenses we are having, um, what our revenues are, and I was able to bring it down a little bit uh, 2.75%, um, and that is the number that would allow us to sustain our programs, use a good portion of the American Rescue Plan money, as well as the other aid that we're getting, but at the same time, make sure that we're sustainable for years to come. Something to keep in mind is, if we go with 2.75% this year, that's free, right? So, okay. There we go. Then next year, our levy with the exclusion will be around 3.35%. But then you can see there's a drop off of 1.12%, 1%, and then less than 1%. And that is the maximum amount we can go to. And so that is something for us to keep in mind in terms of long term fiscal planning. And that's why we are not using up all the money that we are going to get in terms of the aid because we know that there is going to be a drop off and we know that we have to plan for it. Um, and that is why it is so important for us to look beyond just this year's tax levy and look at it long-term 
because our goal is always going to be to sustain our district and sustain our programs. But this is just a sample of what it would look like. These numbers could change depending on you know, additional aid that comes in or grants that come in. Those can change the percent, but this at least gives the board an idea of get to next year and then you have a big drop. And so just something to keep in mind. So the budgeted revenue, as you can look at the budgeted revenue, some things to note are the 11% uh, change from the state aid, that's what I mentioned, 2.75% uh, tax levy, that is my recommendation for us to keep our programs the way they are, and this includes using a lot of our aid. Um, so when you look at the miscellaneous revenues and add it all up, we're looking at about 8.3%. Um, now, also keep in mind that the American Rescue Plan down here, uh, that is something that we were allocated a higher amount. We are not going to use all of it because we are determined to make sure we are fiscally viable for years to come and not just right now. So budget to budget state increase, a little over 11%. Uh, there are small miscellaneous revenue increases. This maintains our appropriated fund balance, which is, a, which is important for us. At this point, we have no intention of utilizing our reserves. You know, as I mentioned in the tax levy, we're dropping to 1.12%, 1%, and then below 1%. We have to make sure that we are fiscally viable. And so therefore, right now in this year, we have no intention of utilizing our reserves at this point. What we're presenting is a balanced budget, and this will ensure our programs move forward successfully. So the calculated using modest tax levy is going to be a 2.75%, um, and that will help us to stay viable. And the budget to budget, including federal stimulus, is 1.9 million, but keep in mind the 1.7 million APR and how it is spread out, and we, can, we have to use 12.5% and so on. So that's that number in the last bullet. Um, most important is the modest tax levy increase of 2.75%. These are some things we have to keep in mind for next year. Uh, there are contractual obligations still pending. Uh, we are in contract negotiations right now, and uh, the impact of those could change the scenario a little bit in terms of the fiscal responsibilities for next year. There are additional expenses for the new building, which is the new BMF, uh, the potential for continued COVID-19 expenses. We are not yet out of the pandemic. We are hoping that next year, we'll be able to come back to normal. That's what each of the administrators spoke, but from a perspective, from, from a realistic perspective, we have to be prepared for next year to have continued COVID expenses relating to cleaning, sanitizing, and then transportation and food service and so on. Health insurance increases are part of this calculation. Academic changes. We have a new math program that we're bringing into the elementary school that is a one-shot expense, but it is part of this budget. Uh, we are hoping and we are working towards making sure that it integrates with our middle high school math. Uh, and then debt service payments, which we also have year to year. So those are some things to keep in mind um, as we look at the overall picture for next year. Um, at this time, I will like the board to ask any questions you might have on the presentation. Uh, Karen and I are both here to answer any questions you might have um, regarding the budget presentation. What is the structure of this plan? Have you identified the students that are not in the plan? And what, what exactly are the So that's a great question. So summer program will incorporate a lot of students that are going across elementary and middle high school. Um, I'm going to fill us in a little bit, and then I'm
I'm going to have to explain some of the details to be able to provide some program uh, with them. And we're also looking at a summer program for the middle school for the open targeting math and reading. Uh, we're looking at four builders. We're also looking at elementary schools. We are looking across different buildings and grade levels uh, comprehensively. Really, because we believe that the learning loss will happen across all the grade levels. We're not confining it. Um, Fred, would you like to fill us in on some more details on each of those summer programs? Uh, so, Santa's CSY program, which we did last year, is uh, part of the 30 items. <coughs> What we're looking at for K 12 summer loss is basically a, a, a blended model of student performance. So, we're using input data from the elementary school, teacher recommendations, and anything which I don't expect to really frankly to get a lot of good data out of these state assessments this year. But anything that we can learn from that, uh, anything we can learn from like, what, we're, what we do at the elementary school to assess our students. So, we're going to use this data first, and we're looking at literacy and numeracy. Uh, kindergarten, first, second, third, fourth grade, for the, two, for the fifth grade, because we start to become depart departmentalized. So, whereas kindergarten teaches literacy and numeracy, at the fifth grade, we have a math teacher that knows, plus some special ed support teachers. In the sixth grade, we're talking about a credit recovery concept, uh, and that goes through sixth, seventh, eighth grade, as well as literacy and numeracy. So, we have some kids that have really struggled to attend uh, either to school or to the work in school. Uh, those kids are going to be identified and we're going to ask them to come in for summer and bring them back to campus to the greatest degree possible. Uh, but again, we're talking about a literacy, numeracy, uh, so maybe an ELA and a math at six, ELA and math at seven, ELA and math at eight, as well as some special education support. When we get to the high school, that's where things get a little bit trickier because we're actually talking about credit recovery. So where the first two programs we can run in any number of weeks that we want in any number of hours. When we get to credit recovery, it has to be um, 48 hours of instruction in order to count that credit as a credit recovery. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with our seniors that missed graduation in June and see if we can get them to be August grads um, by targeting the classes that they failed first. Then our second data point, Sam and I have been going through special education data, but what we learned from that is that if we don't hit four and a half credits at ninth and tenth grade, we exponentially increase the probability of those students dropping out in twelfth grade. So we're looking at um, ninth and tenth grade second to credit recovery, so that we can keep kids on track and invested in learning. Um, and again, all data is going to be all data pulled. So we're looking at SRI, SMI for the Lexile and the numerous, the literacy and numerous, the Lexile and Quantile, as well as course failure data. We can't put that in at this point. We're just to start in Donahue and I are going to start really nailing this data starting Friday, this Friday. Uh, we're going to start pulling these reports. Aaron Krimmel will help us grab the data from school to and start pulling these reports and sit through it. We're going to give ourselves about 10 to 15 days to really, really nail deep into it and see which kids we're looking at. By that time, I'll have a piece, I'll have my, what I'll have is my high water number, the highest amount of students that we'll have. And then we're going to go to the teachers and say, are these kids going to fail your course? Or do they have a chance? Uh, oftentimes, and, and not just here, but here a lot, our teachers, they kick into a high gear in the fourth quarter, really investing time and energy in those kids who are failing to try and keep them from failing. Their expectations don't waver, but their time on task increases. As Ray mentioned, we have those targeted Wednesdays. That would really help us going forward with keeping our failure rate down. If we lose that day, it's going to change our data. It's going to keep it higher for those students that are going to be in the program this summer. If we can use that data and capitalize on that time, then we'll be looking at a lower number of kids that need credit recovery in order to advance in that. That's how many kids are taking that budget. So from, from the program that we're talking about, so the ESY is budget. The program we're talking about is completely grant funded. It's not going to cost the district. Half, right? No, it's oh, it's sick, right? it comes out of it comes completely out of money that we haven't yet spent from the state. So we're golden on this. This is a, a school improvement grant. So we have rollover money from 2019-20, and we have money left under the cap for 2021. So we're going to invest that money in school improvement, but we're going to do that directly impacting student growth. So it's a 0.5% 
zero sum for the district to run this program. That's a question. <laughs> Right now, the doll is conceptual. Do we, is there hasn't been any sit down and you know, dive deep? We literally just literally stopped digging the numbers. Yeah, we might, yes. So we just start looking at the dollar. So, and again, yeah, we're going to try and cover what we can. Yeah, we're trying to do And there's a couple of different models. I mean, we surveyed our staff. Oh, one, the biggest, biggest variable right now is who's going to teach it. Uh, our teachers are exhausted. <laughs> Um, many of them do not want to be part of this. Uh, we're pushing about 74% of, of teachers that do not want to teach some. Uh, but I'm working with a couple of different school districts. We're in conversations with Quest Arbosis to see if we can use that. Uh, we found a program called Elevate K-12, which is presented to, the presented to the administrative team, which is a virtual sort of live talk. So it's not a computer program. There's a teacher in Chicago that teaches a smart board into the classroom. We just have to provide supervision for it. There's a couple of different models that we're talking about. Okay, honestly, I don't know which direction it's going to go in as far as that goes. Each one has a slightly different price tag. All of it, even the high number, would be covered under the grant. Um, but I can't figure out transportation until I know. No, so the one that's required uh, has, has a minimum number of hours would be two and a half hours a day, four days a week for, for the rest we could do a two or three week model, two hours a day, one hour a day, really whatever students will feel comfortable and feel will do the job. So different options, but there's a lot of work to do on this uh, before we can give you where to use this. We don't even have enough data yet. Can't get it until it's clear. Zero. How much you pay? <laughs> about transportation to DC. And I noticed that we are taking some of the uh, funds available. And this was actually part of um, one of the um, budget transfers that was tabled tonight. For transportation, due to the pandemic, we are using less miles, and essentially less transportation, gas, and diesel. Wouldn't it be wise to kind of keep that money knowing that we're going to keep sort of expressing that to other items? Um, I don't think we can definitely that. No. Um, um, we're going to jump in because she and I were already having discussions about the production tonight. So we're going to have to jump in in terms of filling in some of the specifics. Um, it's how much we increase your We're we hearing that we should be investing in our knowledge more work to do, more work to have, transportation on the job. But every five years is zero. There is no rollover from the money that we are going to use. At the end of the year, all that money goes to one spot. And then we go back and say, okay, this is how much they got. Goes to the ground. This is how much they got. Money spent this year doesn't affect next year. This year we have a surplus plus because we need to raise the support funds to build that surplus and things like that. But it does have absolutely no effect on next year's pay or expenses. So you have pretty much projected unrestricted fund balance at the end of the year. I don't have that number yet. Actually, I was just looking at that today, but I do not have that number yet. And, and ideally, because we did not move last year, we did not move money the way we wanted to. So Joe and I have already been in conversation about this. And we will probably um, see uh, coming next month uh, for the establishment of the PRS reserve and the establishment of a repair reserve. We have discussed the repair reserve in the past. Um, and the PRS reserve is you know, something that we've done recently. But at, and at this point, we're not even proposing what the funding is going to be. Um, and we will probably be explaining that some of the way. But we intentionally did not build transfer for reserves last year to make sure that if the governor took another 20% or that we could um, have more come back in increasing our budget to do the more appropriate fund balance to be had. Um, so I can't tell you right now what this looks like at the end of this year because it's also going to be based on this data specifically because we don't know regarding what we're going to do with this. We have no 
I do with that memory kind of thing, the way you can kind of. I just started looking at, you know, our available, uh, you know, at the end of this year, um, what our current budget was and, you know, what we had left over. So I, I just started looking at today, circling and saying, okay, this will probably be there, this will be there, this will be there, this will be there. So I, I just don't have that. I can see we're going in the future. And part of my concern is um, we don't want to get it how quick can we get the results on the problem of the car. There'll be a lot of part of that tax is in there. And I think we have to relook at what the project's going to constitute because part of it is there's a Cost reduction which will save us money in the future if we do the portion of it. And right now it's an alternate, or it may be in phase. And I think I spoke to you on, on, the, on the propane spurt. That cost of operation decreases. And I think that's going to be essential if you're going to have state aid cuts and you're going to have the caps come down. You've got to cut the cost of running these places. And utilities is a good place to look at. It doesn't impact the programs. Will allow you to continue on the projects. So I'd like to see that in the shopping market now, and I want to look at what energy costs are going to be for the next year. I think there's going to have a handshake with everything that makes decisions on. Going to have a handshake on all the decisions for the budget, for the capital project. It's going to be hard to generate that Ouija number. What we're going to wind up at the year end. I don't think we'll see that necessarily. Complex. Well, we're not questioning that. We're questioning peripherals. Things that don't touch the kids. That's what we're going to look at. Our money correctly and cut the cost of operations in years to come. High paybacks. That's what my judgment is. So, and I, I'm just looking at the itemized line by the expense and tax. I'm just going to support that right now. Also, stay kind of high uh, on that. So, there is a uh, 
affects you than in fact for years to come in terms of uh, finances. Um, just, just an additional data point for the board to keep in mind as well, uh, that the levy we determine this year is going to have in fact in two years because of this. Uh, just something, and it's a lot of numbers, so I completely understand um, I'm not sure if it's a bit, but I wanted to make sure that he's not even So I do want to say that the budget does have to be adopted by the end of the day. Um, so, you know, we will, so that's a timeline that I would like the board to be aware of. Um, that you know, we do have to adopt the final budget by Monday, the 26th. Um, so, any discussions, questions, revising that we need to address here, um, hopefully, we can do it this week itself. Um, and, you know, I'm hoping that we can come to an agreement today itself. Uh, but if not, then we will have to put some time off to do it. Because it, no matter what, we do have to make sure we can finish the process. And I pulled the board panel and the board at this time. Is anyone available for business? I think so. Oh, yeah, okay. That puts our morning six to 25 cents a gallon and heating oil was about two dollars and fifty cents a gallon okay and when they did that calculation it showed that it was going to be a savings of between 30 and forty thousand dollars a year right now the cost difference between heating oil and propane is only about 14 percent so it's about a dollar 66 well it is a dollar 66 for the month of, of april for the propane and it was a dollar for 80.4 cents a gallon last week for, for heating oil. I'm, I'm looking at everything else that you said. I'm still seeing a dollar 28. Right, and I understand that. That's, that's not, not looking what, at, you know. That's not what we're paying. Yeah, but we're, I think we need to change the packages and go up because they're getting a look at this target. It was $42,000 and $50,000 savings. That's the case. And my target is when I'm looking at cost of operation. We need to look at how we did things differently. Um, <laughs> we had a bad boiler thrown on Mexico, right? Sorry. Right. We had a bad boiler thrown on Mexico. Right, but that's a replacement under the project. Yeah. So, so, so we are just concerned with that to make sure we can make sure we trim our expenses. That's why we went to do it. Uh, to go back to what Katie had mentioned, the two percent, um, I, I would not recommend that, Katie, because if we were to try and get to the two percent, we have to make up the difference somehow uh, in terms of providing the program. And that means if we are taking uh, for what we could be using next year or the year after that, and we are hardly taking into account unexpected expenses that we can have. Um, so we, we do want to be careful with what we have until we are out of the pandemic, until we are out of this situation. Um, and we, we did our best, you know, to bring it down because instead of going to the region, we went to 0.75. Um, and 
but we can definitely look at it absolutely uh if that is what the board is thinking about to bring it to percent that is something we will definitely look at um i'm just saying that we will have to then compromise on some other things um which may make it harder for us to just come because financially they can only look at two years down the road the maximum we can go is 1.12 you're after that is maximum one percent and you're after that is still at nine percent um, and that will have an impact in terms of if you need two percent to sustain our program and we're at zero point eight nine we'll still be at that and so we in a way will start to do things what we need to sustain so we look at it I would not recommend going all the way down to two because that budget we presented right now balances very easily. Um, we still have to clean up the budget that we have. That money could use to offset a higher levy and keep rolling over every year. Um, so we do a good job forecasting our expenditures. There's always additional revenue that comes in or something that you can't anticipate. And we do a very good job of expending the money that we budget here. I don't think we put the spending on this over on the mark. They're very good. So there again, if the year ends, you know, we get some type of a gamble on that number. Uh, that, that that's that's called our rollover. It's been every year that's I've been here all the time. And it always appears at the end of the year and we roll it over. So I'll take a look at that and see, look at everything, have any questions, and then Lucy and I will make the whole decision. And yeah. the information that the board is asking for. We will have to ask it later. Um, so and then also I forgot to ask for the previous tax. Yeah, I, I forgot to ask for this tax. We'll see what it takes. Let's do it together. We'll move A and B first is my thought. Any other specific questions you have? Anyone, please send it forward so we'll have all the information.
some kind of some value for them. And that's the last critical for a proper reputation for the front of the county to operate the seven months and fourth months. One needs to be one to two senators to see the budget document that came out. Before you announce one that is, I'll just announce that we received three petitions for board members. Katie Snyder is running again. We have two other candidates, Trevor Jewett and Nick Cave. We've already done our lottery drawing for their names to appear on the ballot. So we'll start advertising that tomorrow. I think the middle school, high school teachers are also art teachers are also doing yeah. the same they're thing. They're working together. Yeah. everyone for coming out. And, uh, it was fantastic for everyone. Get your stuff together.